Hello, this is Matthew from Mr. Chen Writes. Welcome to another video. The pen we are looking at today is the Narwhal Scroll Kill in Astra Bronze colorway. But instead of the F nib that is uh, in house nib and pre installed in the pen, I have changed uh, the nib to a uh, bock nib. Um, so I'm going to talk about the recent rumor of Twisby and Narwhal's dispute, um, go over the parts of the pen, provide a writing sample, and share what I think about the pen and the whole situation surrounding the two companies involved. This pen is brought to my attention when I saw the Reddit post a few days ago about Twisby allegedly asking dealers to stop carrying Narwhal and Moonman pens or else they are going to stop selling their pens through them. The reason behind such action came from the filling mechanism of their piston fillers. Twisby claimed that the two companies have simply copied their whole piston filling mechanism and the design. My initial thoughts was, what? Isn't that everyone can make piston fillers now at the patent that started it all from Pelican has expired a long time ago? Then I scrolled down to the comments and found one that says the piston that the two companies used are copied down to the very dimensions of the mechanism. Interestingly, people often compared the two when it comes to starter piston fillers. And so I thought, I do have two narwhal pens, a scroll kill and a voyage uh, nautilus in my possession. Therefore, I decided to make this video to show the piston mechanism of the two and also review one of Narwhal's model. Let's take a look at the pen, shall we? The pen comes with a white box with the Narwhal logo on top and the name of the company on the side, both in this pretty color transition. Um, when you open the box, which sorts of feels like unboxing a phone, you are met with a pen in a plastic sleeve, together with some paperwork which shows you how to fill the pen. And it also comes with a wrench that uh, can help you disassemble the piston mechanism, which I'll show you guys later. So let's get the box out of the way and take a look at the pen. The pen is in this Asfa bronze color, which mainly consists of white, blue and orange with some kind of pearlescence in the material. To be honest, I thought that the blue would be a little bit darker, like the Asfa fish, probably from which the color got its name from. When I received the pen, I revisited some of the promotional materials of the pen and soon realized I was tricked by some kind of filter. It's still a unique color, but... Um, I don't really care for it that much. The pen starts with a rounded top with a metal finial, then it kind of expands a little bit towards the end of the cap. The, cap, the clip has some kind of sword or narwhal um, design here. It's quite simple and it is springy and sturdy. The pen opens in one and a half turn and underneath it is the section made of the same material. Um, it, um, it tapers towards the nib and flares out at the very end. The feed is quite a standard feed you get with most Chinese pens out there like Jin Hao and Moon Men. The middle of the section is around 10.5 millimeters wide, uh, uh, in di diameter. And for those who like to hold their pen a little bit further, the points just beneath the threads is about 12.4 millimeters in diameter. Going past the threads is a clear, very usable ink window, uh, which is also visible when the pen is capped. And again, the same material that slightly tapers towards the end of the pen where a metal ring is put to show the start of the piston knob. 
The whole pan is 145mm capped, 131mm uncapped, and 174mm posted. I personally don't prefer it being posted, but it is postable. Because of the plastic construction, the whole pan is rather light at 25 grams and uncapped it measures at around 13 grams, which is quite uh, comfortable to write with for an extended period of time. Here is the writing sample. We are looking at the novel Screw kill in uh, S for bronze, and we are writing on uh, should be fifty two GSM Tomo River paper. The ink in the pen is the pilot uh, Iroshisuku uh, Yuyake. I think the orange color matches uh, well with the orange color on the pen. This nib on the pen is a two-tone Bok um, extra fine nib. Bok nibs generally have a softer feel comparing to the Yovo nibs. So I can squeeze a little bit of line variation here, but since it is a new nib and it's not intended for Flexing, I think that's it. All right. Um, in the in-house nib that this pen comes with is a little bit dry and quite fine, so I swapped it out, and then it writes very smoothly and steadily without the need to prime the feed like I had to with the original nib. Um, besides the color that is a little too cartoonish for me, I like this pen quite a bit. It is lightweight, reliable and comfortable to hold. The nib it came with writes dry but it is still okay, just not the optimal writing experience I would like to have in this pen. The price for this pen hovers around 40 to 50 US dollars and to me it is a fair price for the pen. However, I do think that Pan BBS and some other brands like Hongdian have slightly better nibs at similar price and level of design. The construction of the pen can also be improved, which uh, with the loose ring here at the end cap, and also um, the glue that does not uh, do a well enough job holding down the barrel. I accidentally turned the barrel. Um, while I was disassembling the pen um, and the glue just didn't hold it together strong enough. Um, I It is not common from what I have heard from other users on this part, but the ring is pretty common though. But the inconsistency of in manufacturing can kind of show here. Now to the part that some of you might be waiting for, the comparison between two piston mechanisms. Here we have a Twispy Eco, which has already dis been disassembled. And now let me first disassemble this Narwhal Scroll Kill.
As you can see, the parts of the two mechanisms look awfully similar. With the only difference in the construction of the actual piston and some material some kind of material difference with the piston rod here being matte in color uh, but the twisty one is kind of shiny the piston here um, the one on the scroll kill has a hard material with two old rings to prevent the ink from slipping through the piston for the twisty pen, this part actually can actually come off the piston rod and it's, it is, the whole thing is made of a softer material which can be put on like this. Beside this difference, the two mechanisms are basically interchangeable. So when I disassemble it a, a bit uh, further, It is basically indistinguishable and the parts can be used in both hands too. I've kind of tried it on the Twisby Eco, so let me show you. Let me show you how it fits. Okay, so. So when I when I put this narwhal piston here, so you can see it basically interchangeable. I can use the narwhal piston inside a twisty pen. Um, the newer and more premium model of narwhal, the uh, Voyage Nautilus, has a metal sleeve on it. How the part looks and functions still resembles the one on Twisby Eco. I saw on the Reddit comment someone questioning the patent on such mechanism. Um, how it functioned, the patent has expired from Padican, but Twisby does have a utility model intellectual property right in both China and Taiwan issued in 2017. But all I can find on the internet is the ones on their 580 model or classic model, I believe, which shares a similar design of their piston mechanism. As this patent is effective for 10 years, it hasn't expired yet. But the question is, are the past that Nawa used an infringement of that right? I'm not sure as I am no law expert and one can always question if that's the case, if Eco hasn't got the patent um, from what I've searched, what do you think? Comment down below and share your thoughts. For me, I feel for anyone who has their work that gone through all the development and testing just to get put into a molding machine of some kind to produce a replica of the mechanism. It would certainly leave a bad taste in their mouth. Someone pointed out that Twisby also kind of copied Pelican's piston mechanism as the M800 piston can be screwed into a Twisby 580. I've seen the pictures and there are some visible change in the, in the sleeve and all those things. So I think it is not 100% comparable. So let's see how things would turn out. I don't know. Let me know if there are any updates in the comments. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe all the YouTube stuff. And that's it for today. See you next time. Bye bye.